Welcome back to Cooking with the Frisbees. Let's start I, at 20. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm giggling. Keith was counting down to turning the camera on from five. I'm like, we can do three, two, one. Right? I can do a two, one. Right. Like, we're like, good. Well, let's start at 30. How about that? <laughs> Anyways, so today, Peter Piper is going to pick a peck of pickled peppers. Right. I'm going to try it. Anyways, right. so I haven't canned before, but I have a plethora of peppers, jalapenos, shoshitos, and I am going to pickle and can them. And I'm very excited about it. I haven't done it before. I've read up about it. We're also going to do some long beans as well which I haven't done before. But in the meantime, I'm picking peppers. Get to picking. Get to picking. Watch out for the spiders. Yeah, so many spiders. Look, Look at them. These. They're just colonizing. Oh. You don't, why are their cameras shot? <laughs> oh my gosh, so many. Probably just pick them, but. I have a lot of these already inside. You said you're going to pickle these? I'm going to pickle my jalapenos. I mean, some of them I'll roast and put in other things. I'm going to make oh, some salsa. Oh, look at the over there. I'm telling you. So we're going to pickle the shishitos as well, which oh. I've never done. But we like pepperoncinis. Right. So I'm going to assume that these will keep a similar flavor with the pickling because the one thing about pepperoncinis is they have a little bit of heat to them not a ton but I know you're not a huge fan I'm getting there but I feel like if I can pickle the shishitos then we have less hot very mild pickled that's my theory anyways. What are these eggplants doing over here? I think the eggplants are pretty much done. I think they're done. done. Why are they flowering? They're still flowering. I think just because of the weather. It's been so warm. Guys, like right now, I think the humidity is like 120%. I, and I feel know like know that's humidity. not a real number, but my goodness. And it is September 2nd. So happy birthday, Renee. That Aww. is my older sister which I already wished her a happy birthday, but I want to say it on camera since she's one of our followers. Okay, shoshitas, my goodness, these are all over the place. So, is there a difference between the green ones and the red ones? Technically, no. They've just been sitting on the vine because I've been lazy and I haven't come out to get them. Um, because we're coming towards the end of the season, some of these aren't that big. These actually look exactly like a pepperoncini, but a, shosh a normal shoshito would be a little bit longer. But because we're coming towards the end of the season and I'm gonna do this canning. Oh yeah, these guys are just coming right off. <laughs> I don't even they have don't to even cut them off. They don't even need to cut, they're big enough. <laughs> um, There's just tons of them on there. The red ones are the same exact flavor as the green ones, so. It's no difference. Some of them are sticking a little bit. It's hard for me to see. My hair is in the way. I need to put my hair up. Oh my goodness, so many. This was a really good crop. Granted, I thought I was planting poblanos on this section. Come to find out. Are you pulling all of them today? Well, I'm pulling the larger ones, yeah. Mm. I mean, because if I'm gonna can, it takes multiple hours. Look at the ones up top, oh my God. No, back. There's a whole bunch of them on yeah. here. Because if I'm canning, because it takes so many hours, I'm just gonna go ahead and get the canning done in one day. If I get more, great. We can always, I mean, cause we like these as a appetizer. 
Oh, that one's drying out. That one's a little bit little. So guys, this is the end of the summer garden. Um, we've got seed starts, which we'll show you how those are doing. I'm gonna go to the other side because I don't want to step through or push through the... <laughs> the spider menagerie. The spiders. Oh, they're good for the garden, but it's a heck of a surprise when you're walking and oh like I'll go to throw debris or something out back and I'll just walk right through it. And then you just feel like something's crawling on you for the rest of the day. Forever. <laughs> Forever. Forever. All right, I'm gonna pull, oh my gosh, come here. See, these guys are really nice and long. Can you see that? About two yep. inches. Oh my gosh, I didn't bring my. Wow, this is a real treat for peppers. Hi, Bella. What are you doing? Bella loves being on camera, don't you? <laughs> Bella. <laughs> she really does not. But Bentley doesn't mind. Yes. Oh, you're such a good boy. <laughs> yes, you are. Oh, the mosquitoes are coming out. They have found that we are back here. I'm trying to go quickly. There's just so many of them. I think I'll leave some of the other ones. Some of these need to come. Yeah, they're ready. All right, ladies and gentlemen. Let's see what's in the basket. Boys and girls. Let's see. Well, pretty much all you can see is shishita, <laughs> but I have a bunch of jalapenos in there. And some long beans. Some long beans. Okay. So, all right, let's get to cannon. Let's show them your uh, fall starts. Oh, okay. Let's see where I just we're at. watered them. All right. We made a pit stop so we can show you the end of the potted plants, too. So it's just very interesting how each of these have come in and out of their season. This guy, not doing great. He got never did really scorched. He was in the hottest part. Right. So he got the most sun between morning, afternoon, and night. This guy still got, look, oh, I might need a fried green tomato sandwich. Look at that. Yes. Okay. And we still heirloom? have, yeah, this is heirloom. We still have flowers coming out, so it's possible we might still get some more. So we might get a little recovery. Yeah. This guy here is just loaded. <laughs> oh, he really is. I mean, these are big boys, which are the ones that we prefer. I think I'll probably do... Obviously, I'll never get rid of my cherries because I love them. Look at all of these tomatoes on this plant. I know, he's still going. So that's what I love about potting some tomatoes is that we can rotate the garden and still keep tomatoes going. This little guy, I just pulled all the very, very ripe um, cherry tomatoes yesterday. Okay. So that's why we don't have a whole lot on here. I mean, they're coming to the end. It was a tough year for tomatoes. Yeah, for sure. Oh, this we got is, one. We've got one. One tomato. You never know. Hey, you know what? You never know. Look at, uh, she's still blooming. There's a bud. There's two. There's one right next to it. They're so pretty and they smell amazing. Thank goodness I covered Willie up last night. All right, let's go back in. Go check out the seed start. Fall garden seed, excuse the mess. Sorry, guys. Oh, it's such a mess. There we are. A little greenhouse. Yes, and it truly is, because trust me, every time I pull this up, I get a nice little facial. Okay. So, these are really close to being able to be going outside, but it's been so extraordinarily hot. Yesterday morning we got to 66, I think it was, mm -hmm. which isn't terrible, but it's still super hot outside. So I've been leaving them in here and I'm gonna go ahead and wait to plant them. So we've got block 
broccoli, we've got kale, we've got bok choy. Uh, you yellow it a little bit. Yeah, well that was from the last time that we took them out. I do need to make sure that I take some of these out. So where I see that I have two, I need to find the stronger one and get rid of the other one. Where I see some yellowing, I can go ahead and get rid of those. I want to make sure everybody is the strongest they can possibly be before I put them in the garden. Um, come down here and we have Brussels, Brussels sprouts. sprouts, yes. Oh, here's my kale. These are my kale, guys. They're looking strong. And yeah, they are. What would you plant here? So these are my peas, typically like beans. You would direct sow them into the ground. But again, it's been super hot here, and I really didn't want to do that to them. Plus, the bed I really want to put them in is not quite ready. I haven't turned it, haven't amended it. So rather than not sow them, I'm going to go ahead and sow them into pots. I know that they transplant. I've seen it. I know that they can. I'm going to give them a head start. And hope they take off once I put them in the ground. <laughs> that's, we'll why see. We, that's why we have so many. Yeah, that's why I've planted um, 10 of each of the different peas. So I have sugar snap peas, yum, and English peas. So hopefully between 10 starts, I can get enough so that we can get enough to feed ourselves. So that's where we're at right now. And Good. I'm going to go in and start canning. Come with me. Welcome back guys. We just got done harvesting a bunch of stuff, including some of our long beans. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, can you see how big these That's things long. are? I love it and I love these and they taste amazing, but they are coming to the end of their season. So I had already harvested some, you can see these, um, and they were in the fridge, in the crunch box, veggie box, and they were starting to get a little wrinkly. So I decided that I'm going to try my hand at canning them for the first time. Um, the great thing about this is that they should keep a little bit longer and hopefully I'll have some for later in the winter time when I'm making soups and stews. But um, the great thing about this process is that I'm doing a water bath which means that you don't have to have a pressure canner, which yeah, they're great. They're amazing. They do it in 25 minutes. This is gonna take about three hours, but because I don't have a pressure canner, I think this is the great way to go. So first things first, I'm going to chop up my little green beans. Now let's see if we like them before we invest in something. <laughs> <laughs> right? Um, I think one of the great things about these green beans is that I'm not having to hand stem each and every one. I can just cut them to the size of a green bean. Look at that. Look at that. I just love these. They're so good too. They really have great flavor. Everybody that I've shared these with like around the neighborhood and friends, they've all just raved about them. I think these are your favorite too, aren't they? They are, and, and I was a big pole bean fan, but I like these better. And, and maybe it's that they're coming out of the garden because like we've noticed everything that we've harvested, it just doesn't taste the same as the ones in the grocery so store. Good. They're just so, so fresh. So good. So what I'm doing is adding them to my cans. I am not pre-cooking. A lot of people do, that's fine. Keith and I really like a fresh green bean, like a, a little bit of crunch to it. So I'm gonna do my best to fill up a couple of jars with these green beans. That's a lot. It's a lot, but... Do they shrink up? No, green beans don't really shrink up that much. Um, but what I am trying to do is make sure there's not too much air. So I don't know how many jars I'm going to be able to fill. I am going to put a little bit of salt in them. Not a ton because we're not huge salt people. Well, correction. 
Keith is not a huge salt people. <laughs> no. I, on the other hand, love my salt, but I try really hard to cut back wherever I can. So I'm going to try with these green beans. Um, there's tons of contraptions and stuff that you can get um, to help you with canning, and I agree with all of them. However, I don't have them, and to Keith's point, I don't know how much I'm gonna like this. So, if I think that it's gonna be a thing, oh my gosh, those pressure canners, they're massive. Oh, they're, are they really? They're huge, they're so huge. So, I wanna make sure that I'm definitely into this, um, because I do want to expand my garden and I do want to make sure that whatever, you know, even when I'm not sharing vegetables with friends and family, that I can keep them. Looks like we aren't going to be able to do three. I know, because last year it got to the point we, we just kind of threw so much away. It was very sad. So we talked about it. That was one of the lessons that we learned from last year that this summer garden we wanted to try and find a way to prolong our ability to eat what we grew and the one thing that i noticed and you've probably heard me say it in other videos is that i noticed because i do most of the grocery shopping i haven't bought any vegetables i buy peppers because our peppers just <laughs> hey i am determined oh my god i will I make mean, that happen that is what i eat when i'm at home every morning for breakfast i have an avocado a pepper and two boiled eggs every day. No lie, every day. Every day. All right, so I'm putting a half of a teaspoon of sea salt into each of these, and then I'm going to go and get, I have boiling water. Rather heavy. And I'm going to fill them right about to here, if you can see that. Okay. So, the funnel? No. Um, so. That's probably easier. There's a gazillion different ways to do you it. probably control it better like Like that. I said, there are real canning funnels that you use and they fit just around the top of this. And it's specifically to help you fill your can your jars. So the other piece too I noticed is that most people when they're canning and jarring, they do it in quarts. These are pints. Um, because we're just two peeps. So if I need more, I'll just bring an extra jar out. But this one is a little Less full, that's okay. Don't, here we go. So that's all I need for that. Now we're gonna put the lids on. There's a couple different ways that you can do this. I've already sterilized these tops and um, in the dishwasher and I haven't touched them except for the outside rim. So I'm gonna go ahead, put the lid on, and screw this on the jar. Okay, another point. There are actually specific like jar grabbers and stuff like that that you can buy and they're not all that expensive. But again, we're doing this for the first time. I don't know if we're gonna really love it. So I'm going to just use a rubberized and tongs. Those jars would be pretty hot right now, huh? Right. Yeah. Which is why I'm using the tongs. So, I think the water is, bath is boiling. Let me go check it. Almost, so it's getting there. Bubbles are starting to come up, so I'm gonna go ahead and bring these guys over here and put them in the bath one by one. I 
and what we're trying to do is it has to cover the jar. You can see that. Now, once we get it to a rolling boil, then I am going to drop it down to a simmer. Oh, by the way, I should mention, I do have a lift in the bottom of this pan. Um, something that you would typically use when trying to steam crab legs or shellfish of any kind um, because you don't want your jars sitting on the very bottom of the pot right next to the heat. You're going to run into a problem. Crack. They're going to burst. Yeah. So let me get the last jar. And here we go. Now here's the craziest part of all. Okay, I have a lot of water in here. <laughs> I might have to remove some of it. But here's the craziest part. Once it finally does come to a rolling boil and you turn it down, you're gonna leave it on your stove for three hours. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, I said three hours. And we're gonna make you watch the entire <laughs> thing. So saddle up, get, some, get popcorn. some popcorn. <laughs> <laughs> no, not going to happen. But we are definitely going to, um, it, they say that's what you have to do when you're canning in um, a water bath. So the Amish do it this way. A lot of the older generation learned how to do it this way before we had pressure canners. And so this is just a great experience. Wow, I can already see some of the bubbles coming out of the um, cans too. So, I've got to take some water out of here or it's going to bubble over. Yeah, when it starts rolling, it's going to roll right over the top. Right over the top. <laughs> we won't film that, so. but point taken. Anyways. I guess that's where you have to understand your chemistry class and your physics class, that the displacement of water of as water. you add objects to it, but. No, I did, but the problem, because I put one can in here to make sure that I could get the water over the top of the can, the problem uh -oh. is I have three. <laughs> okay. So I wasn't thinking, but anyways, so um, yeah, come back and we'll let you see the final product. I'm super excited. All right, we'll be back. This is it. The time that it says it's done, it's been literally three hours that I've had these guys going. It's a long time. And what is the purpose of the three hours? So it's to pressurize the can. So if you have a pressure canner, if you have a pressure canner, it takes 25 minutes, right? You put it in the pressure canner and it's done. But don't, so therefore, you have to do it the old fashioned way. I am way. doing it the old fashioned way because I don't know that I'm going to be able to do this a lot of times. Okay. So, I'm going to pull them out. Oh, wow. You have to grab it by the top. Yeah, not the glass. There we go. Remember, I did not pre cook these puppies. So, gosh, I sure hope this does well, but you never know. All right. We, oh, I already heard one. I heard that too. So when it clicks like that, that means it's pressurized. You didn't get to hear the click. So we'll let them sit here. They should click. After they click, then you take the rim off because it's pressurized and it's fine. And if you leave the rim on because there's water inside, it can rust. So as after, I don't know which one clicked. <laughs> So hopefully all of them will click and then I'll take the rim off and I get green beans. Thanks for watching guys. See you soon. 
Hey guys, welcome back to Cooking with the Frisbees. I'm Beth, Keith is behind the camera, and today is all about jalapenos. We have a ton, so I decided that for the first time, I'm going to go ahead and pickle my own jalapenos. So, you'll see I've already started cutting. This is 20 jalapenos. Um, I'll just finish this last one up. Um, <clears throat> So something I noticed, and you might be able to see it within this huge mound of jalapenos. You see how my jalapenos are striped on the outside? A lot of people believe that that has to do with the heat level. I can honestly tell you, I have some peppers that don't have any striation on them, and I have some that are very striated. Um, but all of my jalapenos seem to be very hot this year. <laughs> so I came across this particular pickling combination and I really liked it because it has a lot of sugar. That is six tablespoons of sugar. It goes in my coffee. <laughs> Just about. <laughs> so we'll go ahead and get started. You see I am wearing gloves and that is because after all these jalapenos the last thing I want to do is stick my finger in my eye because I've done it before and it is very painful for many hours. <laughs> okay, so we're gonna get started. So here I have a cup and a half of regular water. This is a cup and a half of distilled vinegar, so equal parts. Six tablespoons of sugar. <laughs> this is two tablespoons of kosher salt. A teaspoon of oregano dried from my garden and two cloves of garlic that I just pressed. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this on the stove so that we can get all the sugar and the salt dissolved into the water and then we're gonna add our jalapenos and we'll just let them go for like 10 minutes in boiling in the boiling mixture. And then we'll add them to our jars. And that'll be it. Be right back. Okay, we're back. And we are boiling. So I think I told you earlier that I was gonna boil these for 10 minutes. That's not true. I'm going to simmer them. So on very, very, very low. Everybody into the pool. Oh, there's a little red one stuck at the bottom of my red bowl. So these guys are going to sit in here <clears throat> for 10 minutes. And then when we're done, we will take them back and put them in their jar. So come on back. Hey guys, welcome back. Okay, it's been 10 minutes. I'm going to bring these guys back over. And we'll get ready to put them in the jar. Let me tell you what not to do. <laughs> um, yeah, when I put the peppers in and I went back to stir them again, I stood really close to the pot <clears throat> and got a good whiff of that hot vinegar and the spicy peppers. Oops. Stop. Um, I got a, a big whiff of the steam that was coming off of the hot vinegar and the spicy peppers and let me tell you it was not a fun experience so just keep your distance a little bit um it will definitely give you for real like for real for real so what i'm going to do is go ahead and get my peppers out and into the jar we are going to use the liquid to fill up this jar after we get the peppers in it. But I know not all of it's gonna fit in here, so. Not all of the liquid. If so, I think. Okay, should be able to pour the rest of it in. Th 
This is not a good idea. Okay. I got most of it in there for the most part. <laughs> Just a little bit of cleanup. That's okay. Uh, I'm going to get now. I think I'm going to let these cool off a little bit more before I decide to put the lid on top of them. I'm not pressure canning these. These are just pickled. So I'm just going to wait for them to cool down a little bit more and then put the lid on them, give them a good mark. These are supposed to be markers for wine glasses. They're really nifty, but I like to use them for my lids so I can keep track of my dates on stuff on when they have actually been jarred or pickled. So that's it, ladies and gentlemen. Jalapenos from Little Acorn Farm, pickled. And so now, the fun part, I'm gonna taste one. I know these guys are hot, so I'm gonna take a smaller one with, without a lot of seeds in it. Ooh! <laughs> They're spicy. Ooh, no. But, I really like that sugar. Remember I said I specifically used a recipe that had a lot of sugar and I really like it. It with the vinegar, it kind of it competes with it a little bit. It's good though. <laughs> Alrighty. <laughs> there you have it. We're still processing peppers, but look, my jalapenos are done. Don't they look cool? Wow. They're super hot. <laughs> but I'm super happy. Okay, still processing peppers. These are my shoshitos. Shoshitos are a Japanese pepper, super mild. They say one in 10 is hot. I haven't come across a hot one yet. Um, I usually just roast them in the pan um, and then serve them with a dip or they're really good just like to grab them by their little handle and just chew on them. Um, but today I'm going to do something slightly different. So two things, I want to preserve some of these. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pre blister them in the pan and then after they cool off, I'm going to go ahead and put them in my food saver bags, suck all the air out and freeze them so that I'll have single portions ready to just defrost, heat back up in a pan and ready to go. Um, but I'm also today going to use my fresh made pesto and some goat cheese and I'm going to stuff a couple of these for our appetizer this afternoon. So the one thing you do want to make sure that you do with shoshitos is you have to at least pierce them in some way. They will pop on you and they will pop and jump out of the pan. <laughs> so just stab them. A time or two and then we're gonna go heat up our pan with just a little bit I'm literally using it's maybe a tablespoon of vegetable oil in the pan and I'm just gonna heat them up and let them blister up okay I literally just threw them in a pan um, just enough so that I have one layer. These are a little cramped, so I'll have to do a little bit of maneuvering, but I'm just, uh, I've got this on medium heat, medium low heat, and I'm just gonna let them go until they start blistering on each side, and then I'll start turning them, and you'll get to see, they get a great color on them, they get a little bit soft, and they're very yummy. It's, they're so vibrant. Oh my gosh, they really are. This is a great summer treat that's not full. It's not like a heavy dip with a lot of fat in it. It's not, um, you know, chips and all that. It's a, just a lovely, nice, light summer snack. Come on back. I just rhymed. <laughs> so while those guys are popping away, yes, if you, you can, can hear, hear that in the background. Let me walk over a little bit closer. You can hear them just popping and snapping a little bit. That's what I want. Oh my gosh, it smells so good over here. In the meantime, while that's going, I'm gonna to put together a something to stuff a couple of them with. I'm gonna use 
some goat cheese that I have left over that I need to use. And I'm gonna put it with some of my homemade pesto. Pesto is a favorite of mine. I love basil. It's so warm and earthy. But because those peppers have such a warm, earthy flavor to them, I thought, wow, this would be a great combination as they come out and they're warm and just stuff them a little bit inside. They're small peppers, so I'm not gonna be able to like put a ton in there, which is why this is like the perfect amount. Oh my gosh, if you could just smell this. Mm, it's green summer. <laughs> we don't have that technology yet. Not yet, not yet. So that's ready to go. It looks beautiful. It smells amazing. These guys are still going. I'm gonna let them go for a couple more minutes and then I am going to start turning them. Ah, it does smell amazing. You gotta come smell this. <laughs> there we go, that's what we want. It, they're charred, they're burst, they're gorgeous, they're hot. I'm gonna turn this off and pull them away and just let them rest for a minute. You'll see they have beautiful color. It's not something you're trying to get like color on every single side. You just want them to blister a little bit, get a little bit soft. When the, as they cool, they'll collapse on themselves a little bit. I'm gonna pick a couple of them and we'll be back to fill with goat cheese and pesto. Okay, look at that. That is a beautiful, that just looks so earthy and it is healthy. It really healthy. is. And they're so yummy. You can serve them with a dip. You can serve them uh, today. Like I said, I'm going to do this goat cheese and pesto. And all I did was I just took some of the larger ones. I split it down the middle and I'm, oops, I guess I should have split them all. Just open it up. The seeds, so these peppers are not hot, right? So the seeds, it doesn't matter. If it's a texture thing for you, sure, you can release some, but really and truly, okay, we're gonna just. These peppers are still warm, so the goat cheese should get to have a good little melt inside. Let me just cut all of them. And then the rest of these guys, they're already cooked. I'm just going, you're stuck to me. The rest of these guys, I'm going to put them in our food saver and freeze them. So that come put them in single servings. It's just Keith and I, so most of the time we'll eat, well these will be obviously more hearty because they have the goat cheese in them. Uh, but we'll eat eight or 10 of them just as an appetizer. So that's probably how I'll portion them. Put them in the food saver, stick them in the freezer. So that when we're watching football this winter, we can have a little taste of summer. And we do go back and watch our spring and fall garden stuff during the winter when it's cold. Now that's true. Reminds us of when it's warm and everything is flowering and bountiful and just pretty because the winters here in Georgia they're ugly well we just lose everything but now we're doing a winter garden which makes a difference there we go this last one then it's time to taste test Keith because I've never done this, and I'm curious. Oh, I can't. Uh-oh, that's right. You and your Invisalign. 
Okay, well, I guess it's my turn then. Yep. So. It's up to you. Here we go. Mmm. Very worthy. The earthiness from the shoshito, along with the pesto, and then the goat cheese, it's a winner. Okay, now, um, I'm not gonna plug anything in particular, but we did get a food saver. Um, I like it a lot. It's really come in handy. We shop a lot at Costco, but we're only two people, so we shop, we break it down. Well, I should definitely clarify that. Keith does all the work. <laughs> <laughs> it's a project. It is, whenever he comes back. We break it down, we freeze it, we write on it what it is. You'd be surprised how many times you can't figure out what it is or remember Or how long it's been there. Or how long it's been there. So, and we do rotate our food. So whenever we go and purchase and put in food savers, those go to the back, the older ones come to the front. So. Anyways, that's enough <laughs> about food savers. So, um, like I said, I went ahead, I'm gonna package these 10 at a time. Um, usually when I'm doing appetizers for Keith and I, I do a couple different ones. And so having like 10 or 12 of these is no big deal. So we're gonna vacuum seal it. Check it out. Now it's sealing. And presto, it's done. Just like that, I have prepared shoshito peppers ready to go in the freezer. That's awesome. Guys, it's been great hanging with you guys today. We've done a lot of pickling canning, preparing, <laughs> eating a little, snacking. <laughs> snacking, which I don't mind if I do. So thank you all for joining us today and see you soon.